Okay, in this video we're going to build a linear equation given two ordered pairs. We'll start with a simple example of a taxi fare and then we'll do these examples, uh, a different taxi fare, uh, take home pay example and then some examples that include uh, negative numbers and fractions. Okay, so five examples in all. Let's start with this one. If a taxi fare is now the input is number of miles, the output is fare. So this would be number of miles would be x fare would be y so you're told that so if you go one mile and it's five dollars and then you go three miles and it's nine dollars what's the taxi fare now the problem is when we see this we immediately think okay five dollars to go one mile that means the fare must be five dollars per mile right but in the same taxi and for the same type of fare you can go three dollars you can go, sorry, uh, yeah, three miles for nine dollars. Three miles for nine dollars. And so in that case, you would go nine over three gives three. So based on this information, the cost is three dollars per mile. Because we think the cost is simply a per mile um, thing. Well, it's not a per mile thing. That's the trick. Neither of these are correct. It's not five dollars per mile. It's not three dollars per mile. It's neither. And if you look back at the first example we did um, in the previous video you will see the answer is actually the taxi fare is two dollars per mile plus a three dollar base fee and it's this base fee that confuses us okay because look at this to go one mile costs five dollars because two times one is uh, two plus three five dollars to go three miles costs nine dollars so there's our 3, 9. This is our 1, 5. That's our 3, 9. So, you know, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 3, 9 dollars. Okay? So what our job is to find the actual equation y equals 2x plus 3. Yes, I know we know what it is, but we, got, we have to use a simple example to begin with to show us how to find the equation. Okay? So the pieces of information we're given, we're given um, this point, which is 1, 5. And we're given this point here, which is 3, 9, okay? Now, the first thing we need, we, and we have to find the equation y equals 2x plus 3. So we have to find the number 2 and the number 3, the slope and the y-intercept. So the first thing we need to do is to find the slope. And we have a slope formula that goes through to, um, for, for, for when we have two points on a line, okay? And the slope formula is going to be y2 minus, it's going to be 9 minus 5, which is 4, over 3 minus 1, which is 2. The slope is going to be 4 over 2, and that will give us 2, okay? So we can see the slope clearly from these two points on the graph. So we have two points on the line. The, what we're looking for, the answer we, we're looking for is the equation y equals mx plus b. So if we have m and b then we have the answer so the first step is to find m okay now we have a formula for the slope given two ordered pairs the slope m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so that's the second y value minus the first y value over the second x value minus the first x value. Now, this is the first point, so that's x1, y1. This is the second point, so that's x2, y2. And if I plug in y2, I'll get 9 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So y2 is 9, y1 is 5, x2 is 3, x1 is 1. So my slope m turns out to be 9 minus 5 is 4 over 3 minus 1 is 2, which gives 2. So I found m, the slope, to be 2. So m is 2. And I can plug that into the answer now, 2. Now all I have to do is find b. See, I found m, and I just find b, and then I have the answer. So the trick is now to find b. Can you guess how we do this? You already have M, but you don't have B. For what we should do is write down what we have so far. What we have so far is Y equals 2X plus B, right? We have the slope, which is 2, but we don't have B. Now, if I could plug something in for Y and something in for X, 
then I would be able to solve the equation for b. b would be the only unknown variable. Can I plug something in for y and something in for x? Well, hold on a minute. We know that this point 0.15 is on the line. So surely I could put 5 in for y and put 1 in for x and then solve for b, right? So I can put 5 in for y equals 2 times 1 plus b and solve for b. So 5 equals 2 plus b. Subtract 2 from both sides and I should have 3 equals b or b is 3, okay? And so I have the answer, y equals 2x plus 3, and I'm done. And just as an interesting point, when we were at this stage here, y equals 2x plus b, let's write that down again, y equals 2x plus b, because I also have this other point on the line. 3 is an x value, 9 is a y value. So what if I plug 9 in for y and plug the 3 in for x, what would happen then? I would have 9 equals 6 plus b. 9 equals 6 plus b. Then I would simply subtract 6 from both sides. And again, I would get 9 minus 6, 3 equals b. So whether I plug in this point or this point, I still get b is 3, and I have the answer. And the answer is the equation y equals 2x plus 3. So I can write it this way without the parentheses, y equals 2x plus 3. And that is the answer. And again, this is a taxi fare where one mile costs five dollars and three miles costs nine dollars. And we need to find to do these steps because not only does it have a cost per mile, it also has a base fee of three dollars. I mean if you go no miles in this taxi, he's still gonna charge you three dollars because that's the, the charge for just sitting in and putting your bags in and everything. That's the base fee, okay? So let's do example two. See if you can do example two. This is a different taxi fare. Again, the input x is number of miles. The output y is the taxi fare. So one mile costs us $4. Five miles costs us $14. Find the taxi fare. And again, you know, when we look at this, we think, oh, one mile costs $4. Well, the answer is it's $4 per mile, right? But hold on a second, I can go 5 miles and it'll cost $14. So hold on a second, 14 over 5, plug that in the calculator and you'll come up with 2.8 or 280. So that is telling us that the cost, if I went 5 miles, the cost is overall 280 per mile, which is less. So what's the taxi man doing? Is he, does he have different fares? No, he has the exact same fare. The trick is there is a base fee involved, which means that the fare isn't simply something per mile. It's not something per mile. So it's not $4 per mile. It's not 280 per mile. It's a little bit more complicated. There's a base fee involved, okay? And we're going to find that. So first of all, we need to know that our answer is in this form. It's in the form y equals mx plus b where the m is the cost per mile and the b is the base fee part, okay? This is the slope and this is the y-intercept. So if I find m and b, then I'm done and I have the answer. Now, these are two ordered pairs on a linear equation, on a straight line, and so I can find, first of all, find m using the slope formula. This is the first point, x1, y1. This is the second point, x2, y2. And the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay? So if I plug in values for y2, y1, x2, and x1, I'll get... Um, so something minus something over something minus something. y2, 14. y1, 4. x2, 5, x1, 1, and I get 10 over 4. Plug that in the calculator, and as a decimal, you'll find that that is 2.5, okay? So I have my slope, m, it's 2.5. Put that into the answer. Now I'm halfway there, because I need to find m and b, then I'm done. So the, se the first step was find m, the second step is find b. Now, can you remember how we do find B? How we find B is we write down what we have so far in the equation. 
what we have so far is y equals 2.5 times x plus b. We don't have b, but we do have m. Now, if I can plug in a value for x and a value for y, then I'll be able to find b. It'll be the only unknown number in the equation. So can I plug in something for x and y? Well, let's go to the first point. x is 1, y is 4. See that? So I can plug 4 in for y equals 2.5 times plug 1 in for x and then add b and then solve the equation. So I have 4 equals 2.5. 2.5 times 1 is just 2.5 plus b. Now solve for b. Subtract 2.5 from both sides. And I get 1.5 equals b. Done. So I found m. Now I found b. And I can plug this in for b. 1.5. And I have the answer. That's it. That's the answer. y equals 2.5x plus 1.5. And again, I can rewrite that. Okay, y equals 250x, because we're talking about money here, plus 150. So the cost is actually $2.50 per mile, plus $1.50. And you can check that in your head, because look, 250 times 1 for 1 mile is 250, plus the base fee is of $1.50, and that cost is $4, right? 250 times 5 um, would give us $12.50 and then add a dollar fifty. So this is twelve fifty plus a dollar fifty, which gives us fourteen dollars. So to go five miles it costs fourteen dollars just as as we were told here. So this equation is correct. And by the way, at this point here, at this point here if we could also have plugged in, so we've got y equals, you know, 2.5x plus b, we could also have plugged in this x and y value. We could plug in 14 equals 2.5 times 5 plus b, and we would have found that b is 1.5 this way either, okay? Let's take example 3. Let's look at take-home pay. Take-home pay, where your input is the number of hours you work, and the pay is the output. So input x, output y. Okay? And if you're told that, okay, my pay is, I work 30 hours and I take home $251. Then on the same wage, the exact same wage, I work 40 hours and I take home $346. What is that wage or that, you know, take home pay? Now, we know it's something per hour. You have to know that it's something per hour and that there is um, some sort of a base um, fee or um, a fixed uh, constant number being added or subtracted onto that. So before you do anything, you have to know your answer Look, is a linear equation. It looks like this. Y equals mx plus b, where there's a slope and a y-intercept or a um, payment per hour plus some other fixed um, amount added on, okay? So to solve this, we've got to first find M and then find B. So go ahead and press pause on the video and see if you can do it yourself. Okay. Now I'll do it. To find M, M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. This is the first point x1, y1. This is the second point x2, y2. And all I have to do is plug in the numbers for y2, y1, x2, and x1. So I plug 346 in here, 251 in here, 40 in here, and 30 in here. And I come up with um, this minus this looks to be 95 right? 40 minus 30 is 10. So the slope is 95 over 10, which is 9.5. So right away, I have part of my answer, 9.5. Now I have to find the other part, the y-intercept part. Find b. So do you remember how to do it? Press pause and see if you remember how to do this part. Now I'll do it. You've got to 
write down what you have so far. 9.5x plus b. I don't have b yet. Then plug a value in for x and plug a value in for y and you'll be able to calculate b. Now your x and y values could either come from this point or from this point, but not one from each. You have to do these x, this or x and y pair or this x and y pair, one or the other. Okay, it doesn't matter which one. I'll do this one for fun. I can plug 346 in for y equals 9.5 times 40 plus b. Okay, so that will give me 346 is equal to and 95 times 4 um, looks like it's going to be 38. I'll just check that. Uh, 9.5 times 40. Um, excuse me, that's 380, of course. 380 plus B. And now subtract 380 from both sides. And we should get negative 34 equals B. So B this time is a negative number plus negative 34. Okay? And so, just a minute. And so your wage is, the wage is 950 times X number of hours minus $34. So it looks like um, you get paid $9.50 per hour and then this might be um, some money taken away through commuting or tax or something. Okay? So now let's find the equation of a straight line, a linear equation that passes through these two points, okay? 4, negative 2 and negative 2, 2. So the first step is to realize what we're looking for. We, our answer needs to look like this, y equals mx plus b, okay? And if we have, what we really need to find is simply the slope and the y-intercept and then we have the answer. So we need something times x plus something. And the first step, easiest thing to do, is to find the slope, find m. And the equation is m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And if this is the first point, x1, y1, this is the second point, x2, y2, we need to plug these numbers into the slope formula and calculate the slope. So it's something minus something over something minus something. Now, y2 is positive 2, y1 is negative 2. So on the top of the fraction, we should have 2 minus negative 2, which is a double negative, right? On the bottom, x2 is negative 2, and x1 is positive 4. So we should have negative 2 minus 4 in the bottom, okay? So negative negative makes plus plus. So that's a positive 4 on the top, and on the bottom, negative 2 minus 4 is, I'm in debt $2, I subtract $4, now I'm in debt 6. Or you can change this subtraction to adding negative, now it says negative 2 plus negative 4, negative 6. And if I cross, uh, if I um, put this in lowest terms, 2 into 4 goes twice, 2 into 6 goes 3 times, so I have 2 over negative 3 which is negative two-thirds. So this is my slope, m. It's negative two-thirds, okay? So now the second step is to find b and see if you can do that. Press pause in the video. And what we need to do is write down what we have so far. We have y equals negative two-thirds times x plus b. We have the slope, but we do not have the y-intercept yet. And now we can just plug in numbers for x and y and get calculate the answer. So y is negative 2. That's equal to negative 2 thirds times x, which is positive 4. If I plug this point in, y is negative 2 and x is positive 4. Then add b. Okay. And now I need to calculate with fractions. So I can write the 4 as 4 over 1. And if I multiply these fractions out, I have negative 2 equals negative 8 thirds plus b. Okay? 
then to get b by itself I need to add a thirds to both sides. So now I need to do negative 2 plus 8 thirds. Negative 2 plus 8 thirds. Let me get a piece of, uh, another piece of paper for that. So negative 2 can be written negative 2 over 1. And if I want to add thirds to it, I need to change this into thirds. Both bottoms need to be the same if I'm to add fractions. So I must multiply this by 3 over 3. And now negative 2 becomes negative 6 thirds. So now what I need to do is go negative 6 thirds plus 8 thirds. Okay. And negative 6 plus 8 is positive 2, so the answer is 2 thirds. Okay, so on the left hand side I have two thirds, so two thirds equals b. So m, so we found that the slope is negative two thirds and the y intercept b is positive two thirds. So y should equal negative two thirds times x plus two thirds. Or written this way, you know, y is negative two thirds times x plus two thirds. Okay. Let's have a look at example 5. See if you can do this one. Find the equation, linear equation that passes through these two points. And our answer is going to look like this. y equals mx plus b. So we have to find first find m. And the second thing we have to do is to find b. Okay. Now m again is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is the first point, x1, y1. This is the second point, x2, y2. So the slope is y2, which is negative 2, minus y1, which is negative 3. So you have negative 2 minus negative 3, all over x2, which is negative 4, minus x1, which is negative 1. So on the bottom, I should have negative 1 minus negative, or sorry, negative 4 minus negative 1. So on the top, this double negative makes plus plus, and now it says negative 2 plus positive 3 gives positive 1. On the bottom, negative 4 minus negative 1, that's plus plus, that's negative 4 plus positive 1, negative 3. So now my slope is negative 1 third. The slope is negative 1 third, okay? Now find the y-intercept, find b. Write down what you have so far. You have y equals negative one-third times x plus b, okay? And then plug in one of these values. You can plug this in or this in. It doesn't matter. Just for fun, I'll plug in this point. I'll let y be negative 2. I'll let x be negative 4. And I'll find b, okay? So I have to multiply these fractions first of all. And negative one-third times negative 4 is negative a third times negative 4 over 1. Negative times negative is positive, and that's positive um, 4 over 3. So I have negative 2 equals 4 thirds plus b. And once again, I have to turn this negative 2 into thirds. So because I've got to now subtract 4 thirds from both sides. So I've got to calculate negative 2 minus 4 thirds. So change this negative 2 into thirds. Write negative 2 as negative 2 over 1. Multiply it by 3 over 3. And now it becomes uh, negative 6 thirds. So negative 6 thirds minus 4 thirds gives negative 10 thirds. So negative 10 thirds equals B. And that's the answer. Okay. So M is negative 1 third. B is negative 10 thirds. So my answer is simply negative one-third x plus negative ten-thirds or minus ten-thirds, okay? And if you wanted to check any of these on a graph, it wouldn't be very hard. Just get a piece of graphing paper and plot the two points and then see if it worked out. So I could plot, get a xy axis, plot negative one, negative three, negative 1, negative 3, and negative 4, negative 2, negative 4, negative 2. And if I were to draw a line through these points, a straight line, okay, the slope 
The slope is, if to get from this point to this point, I run 3 and I fall 1. So I rise negative 1. So the slope m is rise over run. And I ran 3 units and I fell down 1, so I rose negative 1. And so the slope is indeed um, negative 1 third. The y-intercept is this point here, which is... If you look closely, it's one-third less than three. So the y-intercept, in fact, is negative three and a third, or negative ten over three. So that's the y-intercept, b. So my equation is indeed y equals negative one-third times x minus ten-thirds, okay? Just as we, as we found by algebra.